So guys, it's Mega giving you another deck for Link Evolution. Today guys, we're doing a Paleozoic Frog deck. Now, frogs are good on their own. If you haven't, no, if haven't seen for all, all, all the many years, they used to have like a frog FTK that evolved over time and they're just bloody annoying because a lot of them have effects that aren't once per turn. It's because of the frogs that a lot of cards now have once per turn on them. And the Paleozoics are just added additions because all of them are like trap cards that can act that, can, that act as monsters, and they're all level 2 Aqua Monsters, which is also the same um, same type and level as the frog. So that just means Totally Awesome is absolutely, totally disgustingly broken in this deck. So, without any further ado guys, let's see how this deck um, deck fares in this game. So, if you are struggling to make this deck on any deck I've ever shown, check out the card hall in the description down below. Not if I tell you the colors in this game or not, I'll tell you where to find it. Any of the challenge mode jewels, any of the campaign jewels, and any of the card packs. So, without any further ado guys, let's get into it. Okie dokie guys, so if you, if you have noticed, we're not running any Ash Blossom stuff like that. Plain old trap cards, simple monsters. So we're running three copies of Dupe Frog, three copies of Rolling Tonin, and three copies of Swap Frog. Now these are the only monsters you need to because all the Paleozoics count as your monsters as well, so you don't really need them. Dupe Frog on the field, if it's sent from the field to the graveyard, you get to add a frog monster from your deck, to, uh, from your deck or graveyard to your hand. But please bear in mind, if you link something, it does miss timing because for God knows why I do. Dupe Frog misses timing like there's no tomorrow. So 9 times out of 10, if, when if it's destroyed by battle, its effect will trigger. So please bear that in, please bear that in mind. But it's just, but because it is a frog monster, it works great with Sweat Frog and Pen and our Ronin Tonin. Now Ronin Tonin is a reason with this, and I think Seismitoad is the reason why it is uh, why Frog used to have an FTK. So Running turn guys, you can simply banish any frog in your graveyard, especially summon this bad boy, and that's not a once per turn effect. So if you have your graveyard stacked, you could just keep banishing monsters, especially summon like this little guy. And I'm not gonna lie, guys, it is absolutely overpowered, especially when you provide it with um, your Paleozoics to go into totally awesome like this note tomorrow. And then finally, we are running three copies of Swap Frog, this little bad boy, when he is spe um, you can special summon him by simply discarding one of a mo uh, water monster. So you could simply send Ronin Tone to the grave in order to spell summon out this bad boy. And if you've already got another monster in play or a Paleozoic card ready to pop, you're ready to go to go into totally awesome. And if this guy is summoned, you get sent a level 2 or lower um, water monster from our deck to the graveyard. So simply, you summon out this bad boy. If you've got a monster in the grave, you can ascend Toad. And then that way, you get to go into Toad the Awesome because you can just bring back Toad. Absolutely great. And why this uh, and why the frog scene play. Now we are running some spells. So I'm running two cards, Cosmic Cyclone, because yes, we are running cards like a Paleozoic that can out um, spell traps, but we just like to have that little bit more spell and trap removal because that is what kind of can hurt the deck, especially decks like Mystic Mind that likes to stall, and also we are um, and also kind of stop us against any back row deck that likes to abuse their back row. We are running two copies of Forge Burial Goods because you get sent one of our spell traps to the graveyard. All of your Paleozoics are monsters rather in the graveyard, and, and when any trap is activated, you can resurrect. Them. So that's why Foolish Burial Gods I just used to simply send a Paleozoic straight to the graveyard. And then we're running two copies of Part of Desires because you get to banish ten cards, draw two cards. Now enough, every single card we're running is more is two um, is two or three copies, so there's a high chance that you're not going to banish every single copy of the card in order for in order for desires. And again, doesn't really matter if you do banish like a few monsters because all of your Paleozoic count as monsters as well. On the load of trap guards we're running loads, we are running two copies of Goes in Match. With this, this is a great control card because 9 times out of 10, a lot of the cards we'll be summoning are going to be Water Acro Monsters. So that means all, since all our monsters are going to be Water, Goes in Match doesn't affect us one little bit. But a lot of um, opponent's monsters are namely going to be different. Uh, can either be different attributes or different types. So if they are running monsters with different attributes, this kind of hampers their play a, a lot. Now we are running three copies of Infinite Impermanence because it's a fantastic hand trap. Great, great going second, great going first. Going second, guys, since you have no cards, you can play this card from your hand. Really great trap card. And also, it's like an effect veiler, but can't be called by the grave, so it's even better. And also, if it is set and you decide to activate it, any spell or trap activates in the same column is also negate. Did so, a really great trap. Now we're going on to some Paleozoic cards, guys. Now, the Paleozoics all share the same effect where if a trap card is activated while this card is in the while they're in the graveyard, you can resurrect one of them. Now, 
It even works if you play a Paleozoic trap and you've got a Paleozoic in the grave, you can still resurrect him because it is still a trap card. That's why goes in match and infinite opponents can still pop a one of your Paleozoics that are in the graveyard. And all of them are are treated as a monster that has 1200 attack and all of them are unaffected by every by monster effects which is a really great effect the all share again the same effect where if they are sent from the field to the graveyard they are banished if you summon them via the graveyard effect but if you did use the if you did use them through xc summon they go back to the grave and not banish so please bear that in mind so onto some pit so onto and um, the paleozoics we have three copies of is it can Canadia, I, I keep saying, I keep wanting to call this card Canada because I can never pronounce his name. So Canadia, you get to target one face of monster your opponent controls, switch it to face down defense mode. That means, guys, if your opponent like summons out a monster, simply flip it face down. That means they can't use it for link summoning, um, exceed summoning, synchro summoning. You get it. You, they can't use it for a lot of their summons. I think the only one they could use it for is fusion summoning. So, the, um, so there you go. Um, go crush, slow down your opponent. Three copies of Paleozoic Dynamicious. Dynamicious is one of the best Paleozoic cards because you can target one face up card, doesn't matter if it's spell trap or monster, and then disc then banish it. And all you gotta do is discard one card. So you could discard a card, make it uh, any of your Paleozoics or even one of your toads, because all of them love being in the graveyard, and then you get to banish face sub card. Absolutely great, um, um, great, um, which is abs which is why we're playing it. Two copies of Le um, of um, Lean Chill. Lean Chalia, I believe that's how you call this card. You could target one banished card and return it to the graveyard. Doesn't matter if it's opponent's um, opponent's banished card or your own. So because you're banishing a card of Dynamicious, Dynamicious can trigger this card, and of course your um, part of Desires also triggers this card as well. Really great. Now as for um, two copies of Maralelia, I believe this is. You can simply just send a trap from your deck to the grave. So it's like we're running four copies of Foolish Burial Goods. Because again, this card can just send any one of your Paleozoics. And then, again, if you've got a Paleozoic in the grave, you're going to trigger off it. And then, of course, this will go to the grave. You play another trap, you're going to special summon that, this bad boy. And then we're running two copies of Al... Um... Arlino Diaz. Uh, that is a really weird name. So this guy is um, a you could destroy one spell or trap on the field. So you see what I mean with the Paleozoics. We have flip a card face down. We have banish. We have destroy spell or traps. We have basically a foolish burial. Recover a banish card. We have all these kind of things, and all of them can just keep popping one another. Now I am running two copies of Reckless Greed because yes, you draw two cards and you skip your next two. To, but because it's a trap card, you can simply proc your Paleozoics and then of course you draw more cards in the pro process. That means you can just replenish your hand with some more trap cards and keep going again. That's the reason I'm running it. Now we are running three copies of Solemn Judgment because it's just really great in this deck. It's a trap card and when an opponent's monster would be not, would be summoned or when a spell or trap is activated, you simply just pay half your life points and negate the activation. This is not a once per turn, so if you have all three of them, you can just shut your opponent down three times. And I'm not going to lie, guys, some people, like when I was making this deck in chat, were like, why are you playing this over Solemn Warning or um, Strike? And that's because Solemn Warning and Strike, you, activate a pacific, you have to have a specific amount of life points. Judgment just halves your life points, so you could even have... 100 life points and still resolve judgment so you've um, so it's just kind of like a better one and it also gives you a little bit more protection and then finally we're running three copies of trap trick now trap trick is you can just banish one of your um, trap cards and then you get to um, then you get set to one card uh, one card with the exact same name so for instance you could banish dynamis uh, dynamicious from your deck to set another copy of Dynamicious. But because it's a trap card, if you've got a Paleozoic in the grave, you're going to trigger that and get more resources. So, for instance, if you've got, I don't know, a Mar um, uh, Marella in the grave graveyard, you play Trap Trick, set Dynamicious. That, because you've played a trap card, this card gets resurrected. And then that way, you can just pop Dynamicious um, during the same turn, and then you're good to go, disrupt your opponent, and you're getting a monster on the board. If it's during your turn, you can. If you've got other plays, you can do like more of your frogs. You could just um, go from there and just exceed summon into totally awesome. On some exceeds and um, on some the extra card, uh, extra deck guys, I'm running um, one copy of Paleozoic and um, Anonymous. 
Lace. This is a weird names. So you need three or two, um, three or more level two monsters. This card is unaffected by other monsters' effects, which is kind of nice for a monster with 2,400 attack points. And um, and if a trap card is sent from the spell or trap card zone to the graveyard, which you pretty much do any way when you activate it, you can activate the cop. You can check the cop tile of your deck. If it's a trap, you get to add it to your hand. If not, you send to the graveyard. Absolutely great. And then we're running two copies of Paleozoic Op Opa. Opabina? These cards are weird. So, this card is unaffected by monster effects as well, just like your other Paleozoics are. And you can activate Paleozoic traps from your hands, so that way you don't even have to set them, which is absolutely great. And also, you can detach one of these material to add any Paleozoic from, from your deck to your hands. So this, is, this surges out every single one of your Paleozoic traps. Now, we're already one copy of Sky, Cal Sky Cal um, Cavalry Centuria. This card cannot be destroyed by battle while it has an Xyz material, and at the end, end of the damage step, if you attack an opponent's monster, you can attach one Xyz material to return that monster from the field to the hand. So, it can get around pesky cards, and it can't be destroyed by battle. Really great. We're only one copy of Phantom Knight of Cursed Javelin, because two level 2 monsters, really easy to go in. So you can attach one Xyz material and target one face monster on the field. It loses its effect and its attack points become zero, making it very easy to get over, and they can get over some pesky cards. Now the main reason we're here, three copies are totally awesome. I can't believe this card is at three. It's really overpowered. So you need two level two aqua type monsters, all your toad aqua monsters, and all your paleozoic aqua monsters. So during I've, so during the standby phase, doesn't matter if it's yours or your opponent, you can detach one Xyz material from this card. It is an optional. And you get special a frog from your deck, which nine times out of ten you're going to special that swap frog, which from then upon being summoned is going to mill your Ronin turn into the graveyard, sets it up for next turn or during your turn. And then during either player's turn, when your opponent activates a spell trap or monster effect, you can tribute one Aqua monster and negate that card and destroy it. And also if it, if, and also you can set it onto your field. So if, say for instance your opponent plays Monster Reborn. And you tribute your frog that you summoned during your opponent's turn off the standby phase. You can negate Monster Reborn and then you get to set it on your turn. So you can play it during your turn. Absolutely fantastic. Totally awesome. Can tribute itself if needs be. And if this card is sent from the is sent to the graveyard, you could target any one of your water monsters that's in your grave and add it to your hand. So it recycles your frogs even better. So this card is just totally fantastic. And now on some um, links, guys. I am running Nightmare Phoenix because if we cause obviously more back row removal, and it's easy to go into. And the same for Nightmare Unicorn, just easy to go into. And you can um, discard one card and target a monster on the field and return it to the deck. We're running one copy of Link Spider because your Paleozoics are normal monsters. So that means you can just link them away into Link Spider. And say, for instance, you've got two Paleozoics with the same name, you can just link it away. We're going to Link Spider, then you can go into um, Nightmare Phoenix or Nightmare Unicorn off it. We are running two copies of of Marinsis Col Am um, Am um, Ami Mana. I can't uh, Am I can't say this one. Uh, the Coral one. So you get to target one Waller Monster with fifteen hundred attack um, in your grave, which which can recycle your Muster Boy or any of your frogs, and you get to spec should summon it. So you can recycle Muster Boy for the this card and you can just keep extending away because it uh, away because muster boy you can um, we're also running because it gives all water monsters including itself 500 more attack points which can give totally awesome all the way up to 2700 attack points which is absolutely sweet and if it is destroyed by battle or by card effect you get to add a water monster from your deck so from your graveyard back to your hand so it can recycle totally awesome which is really great and again if you do use coral's ability the T you can resurrect this and just make them really more um, really more overpowered. And with that guys, I know this I've gone through this deck pretty much quick, but it literally speaks for itself. It's a really easy deck to get hold of. You just basically abuse your trap cards to disrupt your opponent, and then you're gonna use your frogs with your traps and just go to totally awesome majority of the time and just lock down your opponent and just completely annoy annoy the hell out of them. So I do hope you enjoy this deck, guys. If you do, hit that thumbs up and make us see subscribing, because either one helps up the channel grow. Wherever you are, guys, please stay tuned um, for more decks, and I do hope you um, do hope you have a fantastic day or night. So take care and have a great day.